one. I'm going to keep it to check your messages tonight because last week we had a little bit of tech hiccups. It happens. Tonight we're using Zoom. So I'm so excited. So it looks great. We look good. Hi, Susan. Hi, Hayward. Susan. You guys, if you are new to Hollywood Bound, I know we have a lot of new members here in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. Susan, a lot of people joined just today because they wanted to see this interview. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, yes. friend. It's exclusively in the HBA Facebook group. If you're new to this community, number one, I'm Christine. I'm your guide, your mentor, your cheerleader, your friend. And there is an amazing community of actors from around the world right here in this group of all colors and all, all levels of, of experience. So it's not just about me here. It is about you guys supporting each other. And what I've been doing for the past several months is having this HBA Spotlight series, interviewing different actors and actresses who have been a wealth of experience and knowledge and just a story to share. And tonight, I really, I've been trying to get Susan on my podcast, the Hollywood Bound Actor podcast. If you don't know it, come check it out. But the stars aligned, the time was right. This is the divine perfect time right now. Mm -hmm. And we are here. And I feel like I already know you, Susan. But let me, for those of you who don't know her, I just want to give a little brief bio. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll give you some highlights. First of all, Susan and I have never met. This is so you're going to get to have us feeling each other out for the first time. We've talked through Instagram, but you know, you know how that is. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, and if you miss any part of this or you need to leave and come back, no problem. All my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up? Replay watchers? <laughs> Love you guys. So listen, Susan Hayward is, an, is a classically trained actress. We have mutual friends. I mean, as soon as I say your name, I have friends like, oh, I love Susan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I already love that. So I already know she's good people. She studied at so many schools, Freedom Theater and Moscow School of Dramatic Art. She got her BFA from Carnegie. Me oh, let me sit up straight. Carnegie. Yeah. She got her definitely. BFA from Carnegie Mellon University. It's lower as me, <laughs> darling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of you may know her if you're fans of the show Orange is the New Black. For the past couple of seasons, she has starred as Tamika Ward. Look at these hearts. You don't, you can't even feel the love right now. So when this is over, Susan, you're going to have to come back and pop up in the comments. Okay. okay. So much love happening. Um, she was, you may have recently seen her on Tommy with Edie Falco, who I love uh, Edie Falco. Amazing. I mean, she was on the PlayStation original series Powers. I think I had like 8.5 auditions for that show. I don't remember what for. I never, <laughs> it's fine. Sidebar, sidebar. And she, she was also in the Broadway cast of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Susan, based right now you're based in New York, yes? Welcome to Hollywood Bound Actors. Thank you for having me so much. I've loved kind of being on the edges of the community <laughs> that you've built online and I'm like, can I, hello, 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 hello. Hey, community. Hey, people. She sees you. Susan, hi. It's so nice to connect with you. Can you give, uh, first of all, let me just say this. Hollywood Bound Actors, and I'm going to shout y'all out right now. You guys are the most supportive community I have ever been a part of. It was created because of you. Mm -hmm. You guys helped create it. I said, I, I, was, I gave it a name and a place, but you guys have now made it home and I'm so grateful to you. You guys control the energy here and it's such a place of love, honor, and respect. So I wanna just know that everybody we bring into this space is here to support you. So Susan, how did you even start acting? Like, how did you know you had the bug? Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a long journey. <laughs> Um, my mom bribed me to be in my Easter church, like my church Easter program when I was like four. She knew that I wanted the stuffed animals. She's like, if you memorize your Easter speech well and you get up there and you do the thing, we're going to go buy that bear. Okay. Like, you like bear? Bet. Deal. I got you. <laughs> and it was one of the most magical moments of my life. Like I went up there, I memorized it, did my things. I had my little cute shoes on. And then I walked back to the pews and I'll never forget it. I'm thinking we're going to go shopping later on after it to buy the thing. And I turned around the corner of the pew and my mom had already bought the bear and she had it for me already. Aww. And I was like, did you, did you believe in me? Did you like have, yeah. 
did you know I had this? And I feel like that kind of vote of confidence and the freedom and the fun I got from that, it kind of started early from there. And then I saw Lynn Whitfield play Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker story. Honey, that moment when, when everything is gone and she's stripped at that house by herself. And, 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 and like for me, the, the, the opening when she was like just being a child and all the white people came through and tried to burn the place. And she was like, I will never be afraid again. And no children will be afraid again. Like that kind of thing that could drive art and drive yes. performance. I was like, I'm keyed in. Ooh, what are we gotta, doing? What are we going? Oh, I got to make a note on that. Cause I, we got to come back to that. What drives art? Because I oh. talk about that so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So See, sisters, after this quarantine, when I come to New York, girl, come on, come on. Um, on. I love that. So just so you guys know, you know, Susan and I, before any guest comes on, I'm like, I always ask, like, what should we call our talk? Because let's not also forget. I mean, none of us can forget. We're all in the state of the world right now. And for some people, it's, it's tricky. And it's tricky, honestly, Susan, being a leader. And, and having a community and being like, nobody want to hear about acting right now. Nobody want to hear about that. And I just disagree. I believe, yes, everything is happening in the world, but art, artists, we are the thing that helps people escape. We are the thing that gives people hope. We are the things that, that you know, like you talked about, you shared with me a, a poll that was in the, it was like the Sunday times. And it was asking about those of you who are not in New York, let me, Susan shared it with me and I looked at it and I couldn't believe it. It said, it was asking New Yorkers, what do you think are the top five non-essential jobs? And when I hear non-essential, what do you think when you hear of non-essential? I mean, I think something that I can live without It'll be fine. I don't need it. I won't miss it if it's gone. That's what I think of non-essential. And so <laughs> that, and I feel the same way. Won't be missed. Not a big deal. Not important. Guys, do you know the 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 results came in? Seventy one percent of the people who took that poll in New York said being an artist was non-essential. We can live without it. How did, how did that affect, when you saw those stats? Well, f- for me, it was two things. It was like, wow, our education system has failed us because even the little icon of what an artist meant was a picture of a man with a little beret and a mustache. <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. He's an artist too. That's one, one, one kind of artist. That's one kind of artist and a very particular, like, visual art that can be in a world that maybe might feel removed from from the public but that's not all artists that's not our storytellers our people who make beautiful fashion that makes us feel good that's not our people who make songs and music I I was shocked at how narrow the idea of what an artist was and how uneducated um it even in the New York Times right? Like how narrow that imagery was. And then two, the idea that you, you ain't need it. Like we just, we'll be okay without it. So we can delete, so we can get rid of TV. Y'all can just have the news. And then what else? Music, I think. You don't need, no, we don't need, we don't need music. We don't no, need actors. Morning. Everybody's gonna wear jeans and a t-shirt. Um, but wait, don't worry about lightning. We'll just put a flashlight on everybody. Like what? What do you, what do y'all think artists do? What do you th- who do you think we are? I love somebody put in the comments on Facebook. This is ridiculous because an artist made this post. <laughs> <laughs> an artist actually made this post. So well, you wouldn't be getting this information with an artist. So <laughs> hmm, let's talk about it. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. guys. Just know how I've been structuring these, these lives on Wednesdays. I okay. see your comments. I honor you. I love you. I'm going to come to the comments, uh, a little bit later. So do not stop asking questions. If you have questions for Susan, ask, just know I'm not ignoring you, but right now I just want to set the stage a little bit so you can get to know her a little bit more, <laughs> but I will come to these questions. And that's why I'm on my phone looking at y'all. So I see you. I see you, Steven. I see you, Shantae. 
I see you say, say Khan is on the line. Hey, say Khan. Khan. hey girl. Oh my gosh. That was powerful. And you know, it's, it's just so much going on. And I think now more than ever, I even sent an email out to my community today. Like my goal, I know there's a lot going on. I don't have to tell you that, but my goal is for this space, at least to feel like a beacon of light, a beacon of hope, a beacon of inspiration. Yeah. So before quarantine hit, what was life looking like for you as, as an artist? Ooh, it was, it was looking like recovery. That's the word that comes up. <clears throat> um, 2018 had been such a busy year and it had flown into 2019. And I went from having two jobs that took up all of my time to having no jobs and having no structure, kind of being in a really floaty, ungrounded place. And that's normal. Like I'm used to that kind of roller coaster. Ebb and flow, yeah. Ebb and flow, what we do. This it was harder than I expected this time to recover. I was like, bet all right, I just finished that job, I just finished that job. I feel the momentum. Well, all right, let's book the next one. Let's book the let's book the <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need a nap. I need I need to go on a date. I need to like read a romance novel. I need to chill out. I need to talk to my family and travel and be a person. Right. Um, Not just the, cause this life, and I'm always trying to tell my students and my community, it can be all, it will, as much as you allow it to have, it will, yes, suck up every bit of you. Every bit. Every bit. So how do you find that balance? Let's take quarantine out of the situation. Just before this, was there balance? Did it even exist for you? It was it, it was a work in progress even then. I, I hold on fast to my friends who aren't in the business, people who I knew in middle school or high school or who went to college with me and then went into a different field. I think it's really, really important to have close friends who are not in the business at all. I agree. Um, the, the, just a different perspective on the world and the different schedule keeps the business from doing this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I had been doing some work on identity stuff, right? Like acting is what I do, but not necessarily who wow. I am. Mm-hmm. So that when I'm not acting, I'm still me. Yeah. And I've been doing it so long that there was a time right at the beginning when my heart would break at the end of a show or at the end of a project because I didn't know who I was for for a second. And so I've been coming along with that that process. And then like all of 2019 was recalibrating and I was a bit of a mess, honestly kind of fell apart a little bit. And then right around November, December of 2018, I was like, okay, I'm going to call this person for help. I'm going to call this person for support. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to get some instruction here. And it was about gathering a team of people who knew stuff that I didn't so that I could learn. Um, That was a big lesson that I was learning in the beginning of 2020. And it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. Let me ask you this. When did Orange, so for those of you who are not familiar with Susan, she, um, the past couple of seasons, she's been starring on Orange is the New Black, an amazing show with an amazing cast. I mean, a huge cast. I worked with um, Dasha on American Crime Story yeah. uh, about the Gianni, uh, Gianni Versace assassination. Sure. Sure. And you just, I remember her, us talking and like, you know, while we were sitting around waiting, like just so many people and it's so many personalities and, but it's still like a tight knit thing. How, uh, when did that wrap for you? Because I know, cause they're done. The show is, is, has ended, right? Yes. That wrapped for me in February of 2019. So how is it to show up to set every day? And there's just people and there's people you know, I did a podcast episode about lost and it's something we don't talk about a lot as, as actors. Yeah. And I don't think we own it actually often e- either. Yeah. Our job is to bond quickly. We got to bond quickly because it has to read on camera. The camera is a lie detector. We knows when we're lying, has to, whatever relationship it is, we got to make it quick. Like, you know, we got to bond quickly, even for theater. I mean, mm-hmm. just, we have to bond like out in a quick way, more than the average human. And then more than the average human, we are ripped apart from those relationships. 
the bestie you had on set, the people you talked to at Crafty, everyone you saw every day is now gone. And with yeah. the best of intentions, love you, but I live in you know, New York, you live in LA. I may see you at an award show. How, how do you personally, is it, how do you either release a role or how do you deal with that loss? Because it is a loss. Even people who aren't your, like, we hang out and get drinks every night. Like, they're still right. like. It's a, I mean, one, to go back to the stability of my life, right? To have the people who are there for longer than just the show. They're there for the season. Right. So I go back to them always. And also, so I, I grew up in the church and I'm also like a, a Bible nerd. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the Greek words, the old Hebrew words, like their original meanings, those inspire me a lot. And there is an old Greek word for love called agape. Yes. And that's just a love for all humankind. And so what I try to do is create a, a practice of just loving people in the moment, right? Like you are here, we're present, I love you. For what this is right now, I don't is. have to overthink it. I don't have to put anything on it. I don't have to pretend to love you. I can actually love you just because you're God's child too. We're, we're artists trying to build this moment. And then when you're gone, that doesn't mean I stop loving you or you stop loving me. That just means I'm loving you from afar now. Yeah. I don't, you know, it doesn't have to be, the moment doesn't have to be defined by these five senses. It can be defined by something something larger than that. So like we're still in the same community. Yeah. And it, the next time we cross each other's pass, uh, path, it'll be, it'll be beautiful. You know, yeah, I, you, and you treasure it too. Yeah. And I, I think as a, as an artist myself, I was, who was I talking to about? It might even see you say Khan, if you're still on. She was asking about where some of my closest friends lived. And for the long, once I booked Lion King in 2006, mm -hmm. I met people from all over. And so when I left or would leave a company and join another company, I did five companies in Lion King. I have friends from all over. And five? <laughs> oh, you're not Lion King, honey. They will, once you, once those costumes are built, we are, you are hopping around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no Ingunyama left in me though. Because <laughs> <laughs> they will pull it all out of I you. Mean, like, I have anything. no desire to run into Simba's arms anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this body is like, no ma'am, you better sit in the trailer. This body <laughs> goes for trailers now. <laughs> Woo, eight shows a week. The whole sidebar conversation. Yeah. But it, it was around that point where I had to, I just accepted that a, no one place was home and no one place had all my friends in it. And I'm so grateful for technology and FaceTime and duo and, and Facebook Ooh, and Marco Polo. I love oh, Marco Polo. He, yes. I'm on Marco. Say kind of now on Marco Polo almost all day, every yeah. day, like at some point. It, and it's so convenient. Cause it's like, when you get this, when you get time, just watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me know. Yes. But I'm going I'm to I'm check. Okay. Yes. Guys, welcome. I see you guys. I know you're enjoying our conversation. I will be taking questions. I see you here. I'm not being rude. You're on the phone. I feel your love. What questions do you have for Susan? Because I'm, I have my own, sh my own list and we're going to talk about some things and I will get to questions, but I wanted to, um, we're just getting to know each other. So you're getting to be a fly on the wall of our, our, I have lemon water. My lemon, our lemon water. Yes. Let's talk about how, um, yes, they come said Marco Daly. Yes, absolutely. Marco. Let's talk about a little bit about your, before we go into some other things, I want to hear about your, your Broadway experience. So the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, was that your Broadway debut? Or had you been on Broadway before? I've been on Broadway like? once before. Um, I got to understudy for Condola Rashad when she did Trip to Bountiful. Oh, okay. So that was uh, a heady experience. In in one ways, it was like literally my dream come true. Cicely Tyson is a personal hero. Vanessa Williams is one of the hardest working women in the industry. And then you had Cuba Gooding Jr. Woo! First play, his first play ever. And he was diving in there with Perros. And then Condola Rashad, who I had already understudied for Ruined. So it was like, hey girl, what's up? Let's go to work. Let's do this. Right. Um, so in some ways it was a dream. And then in other ways, it was also a bit of a, 
um, taking some rose colored glasses off of what Broadway can be. You, Let's talk grow, about it. Let's talk you, about it. You grow up with the stars and the sparklies and the rainbows, and then you get in there. First of all, those days, like you said, those days are long. Very long. Like they they need your body to be a machine. You're living the life of a monk, you know, especially with you guys singing, you have to take care of your voice. I don't know how people go out and party afterwards. I've never been. You get to a point where you be like, whatever, it's going to be what it's going to be. That's what you, that's what happens. But not when you're a lead though. When you're, when I'm ensemble versus when I'm Nala, it does change. But then even there, you get to a point, you be like, you know what? Take this whiskey right. <laughs> and this whiskey gonna put me to sleep, and I'm gonna do the show on four hours of sleep <laughs> until you get those notes, and they're like, "Uh, Christine, that the gee that the gee was off." Uh, so I just fix get it. It's supposed to be gee, and it was get. So, <laughs> but I, it was such a great moment of like learning what my boundaries are, what my limits are being humble by what was possible and what I was like, I can't, I, I can't do that. Right. Uh, I just can't. Um, and especially in this current moment with the, we see you, uh, freedom to speak that black performers have had on Broadway that before, before this, I feel like people maybe didn't feel as free to speak. Yeah. There were things that kind of made me cynical about the business of Broadway right? Like they need your body to be a machine in order to fulfill the needs of the performance schedule in a way that I found it messed with my, my self-esteem and mess with my sense of possibility. Yeah. You know, you can get locked into this rhythm that you're just on the mill. And I'm like, where's the lightness? Where's the sense of play or possibility? It's the same thing over and over. And I found that to be surprising yeah. and a bit of a disappointment a bit of like that's not what I thought it was going to be no you know? um and, and and then also too it's when you're understudying and shot and first of all let me just say for any of you who are in this space understudies don't get their due understudy swings it is a hard job and it doesn't get the respect that it deserves be clear but it's a great training ground I will say that it is it trains to memorize that whole script to be ready. I remember, I think it was Saikon. She and I went to go see A Raisin in the Sun. The mm -hmm. one with Diddy, Audra McDonald. But Viola Davis was Audra McDonald's understudy, guys. <laughs> Saikon, do you remember that? And Audra was not on that night. And the audience was like, wah, wah, Viola, whoever is on. <laughs> I want to flip over a table. And I remember being like, <laughs> amazing. Like, you don't get no understudy by accident. You still have, to, I mean, you're being entrusted with something. And, yeah. and what it takes to show up and to perform. And when they make that announcement, ladies and gentlemen, tonight the role of such and such will be... And Played you hear the audience... Person you paid for. <laughs> and you hear the audience do a collective... Oh. And now you have to earn their trust and their respect three times as hard. Every step of the way. Every step of the way. But it's such a great ego killer. Like, it's a mallet to your ego. It's not about you. It's not about the choices you would have made in the rehearsal had you had a rehearsal you didn't. You need to go ahead and preserve <laughs> the, the show that they directed and that the person you're understudying for put together. And, like, it can be fun to slip in a few artistic choices, you know, artistic flares, but right. it's not your job to come in and change the show. Your job right. is to preserve something else. And yeah, ego, <laughs> you can shove it. Just talk. Oh, oh you something. had an ego? It ain't, you don't have one no more. Not today. Can you know, I, what I love about, um, we have oh so much to talk about. <laughs> Being in the New York market, a lot of times my actors are hearing about, I'm, I'm talking, I try to talk from the Atlanta market, New York market, LA market, but because you're in sure. uh, New York right now, uh, and this is for you New York actors specifically, what I love about the New York market is there's a great respect for the actors who do theater. Unlike LA, they're like, yeah, Broadway, whatever, regional, whatever thing you did. Yeah. 
are you a TV star, or a movie star? But in New York, there is a respect there. So in TV shows, uh, the average audition, you're going up and you're seeing other Broadway divas, people who are like, res- even if they're not on Broadway, they're respected, they're done, they've done the public, they've done yeah. quality work. How has that been as you've transitioned or as you, mm-hmm. you're doing both, but when you make the transition to film TV, what, how, how do you make that shift in your mind or what is a mental tip you can give our audience that might be in that market? Mm. The hard, I'll, I'll share my challenges. The hardest thing for me when I'm shifting, particularly from stage to film is trust. Trusting that after I've done my work, I don't have to show the audience. I don't have to do that muscular uh, presenting that can be helpful when I'm on, on stage. Yeah. So I remember after months and months of doing Cursed Child, I went into, I think it was a commercial audition for something. And I went in and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, ma'am. Okay. First of all, too much. <laughs> time, time out. <laughs> um, thank you. But <laughs> we're going to change my energy. <laughs> You're right. And I was like, you mean this isn't normal? This isn't, this is not normal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it's just like, just a, a moment to breathe and remember where I am and to not get on a- autopilot. You know, yeah. that thing that I talked about, the rhythm you get in when you're on Broadway to break that up. Mm-hmm. When, when you move mediums. Um, and then there's, there is that thing when you're in the room and you walk in and it's like, oh my goodness, I remember seeing her in that beautiful production at the New York Theater Workshop. I'm so, who? And then um, my, my Reiki teacher, uh, Leah Rising, also a meditation teacher, just a beautiful soul. You definitely look him up. Um, he was on the phone with me once while I was going in for an audition. And he was like, I don't understand why you're thinking about that person. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, read her, be civil, but you should be thinking about the character. You should be thinking about what the character wants, what the character needs, what the stakes are. You are a vessel for, Absolutely. for this other character. I, and, I, and I was all in my head, right? I was like, it's fine. You know, she's gonna bring something to the character that I'm <laughs> gonna bring something. She's. I thought I was. You're, like, having the talk. You're having to talk with yourself. He was like, I don't understand why this other third party is in your head. This is a conversation between you and the character, and you're going to share your work with these people whose problem you need to solve. Mm-hmm. Can you help them find this person that they're looking for? Mm-hmm. And I was like, You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that. That's that. That's the the, the my intellectual that knows that knows that. But then. We, for those of you watching, we, we all go through it. You know, we have to talk ourselves out of it. You know, I, was, I did an IG Live yesterday with uh, Laura Nimi, who's, she's a wonderful actress on This Is Us. Okay. And she was just like, you do so much stuff, Christine. I'm like, yeah, because I keep blinders on. Ooh. Right? I said, too many times, you trying to walk, right? You trying to walk, but you looking to the left. Oh, what's she doing? What he doing? I wonder why you tripping into stuff. Like, oh, shoot. Like, if you just look, if you would look in your direction, there are so many amazing things in this direction, but how are you going to find it looking over here? Try it. When we get off this live, just start walking down the street, looking to the left or the right. Don't look straight. See where you end up. <laughs> I dated you. Don't try it around those street corners, though. Because right. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do it if you try it while you're crossing the street. That wasn't me. Right. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate you sharing that because that is just, that is, it is just so true. Um, Tell me a bit more because I want to, and I promise to come to your questions in a few moments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we talked about this beautiful trend. If you missed any part of this, this will be uh, replayed. You can follow Susan on Instagram at Susan Hayward. All her stuff is up there. Um, you talked a little bit about it, but I want to spread a bit more light on it if people are not directly in the community about the We, we See You. Yes. Talk more about what that is doing how that's uh, coming to be in light of our current uh, climate and what, what that is for anyone who wants to get more information. I, I, I'm not directly involved. Um, I know a lot of the people who signed the first draft of the petition 
from what I saw, it was basically a, a lot of newfound freedom uh, amongst Black performers, and not even just performers, Black folks who work in the Broadway community, because while oftentimes we are the face on on stage, but not behind the scenes, there are playwrights and stage managers and uh, directors and would-be directors who don't give a, who don't get a chance on Broadway. Yeah. There's a newfound freedom to call out behavior that is damaging based on race, uh, racist tropes in the work, racist attitudes by people who are holding the dollars to get paid for the work, uh, patronizing attitudes of the white savior, like bestowing a chance on the poor, you know, yeah. properly deserving black folks. There's a, and I, I would I would say in the second time I went to Broadway, I, I saw it a little more. There can be this very insidious stealing of freedom when you're in, in, in that culture, when you know that to speak up would either cause problems. Or cost or you your job. It would cost you your job, um, cost you the next job, you know, like maybe they won't say anything now, but it'll cost you something later. And so when we see you, and I do think it's because of quarantine. I do think it's because people don't have jobs to lose right now, right? It's like- This would be like, well, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. I might as well say what I'm gonna say. And, and, and after seeing, I haven't watched the video, but after people watched George Floyd get ripped from this world the way he did, there's just a level of stealing our voices that's no longer possible. Like you can't shut me up. There's too much rage. There's too much freedom at hand that it's close. And I think for me, I actually wasn't sure if I would sign it at first because I was like, okay, so what are we gonna do? Yeah. Us saying we see you is not action necessarily, but I do think it's an important thing to say when you're being abused, when you're not being treated well, to get your voice back and say this is unjust is a is a really important moment. Because so many times it's a, it's a private thing. Sekhan says we swallow so much. Absolutely. Courtney says fear re repercussion. Absolutely. Um, and if you want to know more about this, all you have to do is search the hashtag. We see you. We'll go to Google. We see you. You will find. You will find it. You will find it. <laughs> um, it's been all over my pages because I'm so connected to the Broadway community. Um, and it, it is this thing of, you know, we work so hard, whether it's, it's, whether it's on Broadway, whether it's on, in TV and film, you get to the point where you have, you've paid these dues, you've trained, you've, you've invested in yourself and you don't want the one thing you say to shut off all the work that you've done. All and I have been in that position for sure, yeah. for sure. Where someone says something, you'd be like, there might be a collective look between the other black people, you'd be like, this shit. Or a collective look between the other women and be like, did he? <laughs> you better be intersectional. <laughs> I mean, but I've been, because that's where I've, we've, and then, and then it's this moment of making a choice. And it, it takes courage. All of this takes courage. Yeah. Yeah. Because. And, and and then from and it's also the other end where you say something and in the face of that person who has power over you, you see something happen in their eye and you go, Oh, oh, that was that was not the thing you wanted to hear. <laughs> well, you're gonna do what you're gonna do against me, <laughs> you know? And the fact that you you're it's it's required somehow that you're policing yourself. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and it's so hard to be in the work as an artist. Exactly when you are also trying to be your own security yeah, and your own, you know, sensor in the process, because as artists, we are showing up. Like I always tell my, my students, your job is to show the white meat. I need you to do that exercise. We do unzip. I need you to take you all the way off, Come on. you know, and God. literally be like, be that open and tell the truth of these people that we're, that we're portraying. Um, Cause that's our duty. And it, it's just hard when there's all these other boundaries and barriers up. Yeah, uh, it's possible, really, to be any good. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that's frustrated me lately about Broadway, particularly. It's held up as a paragon of 
craft when really it's such a capitalist endeavor. It's to make money. And so many decisions are based on that bottom line. Not the art. Let me tell you something. And I'm not going to say no show names, but let me just give you a perspective. Picture it. I love going to Golden Golden Girls vibes. Picture it. <laughs> Broadway. Any year. Voracious, uh, not the, that's not the word. Well, uh, imagine the worst snowstorm possible. Come on. Broadway is still open. <laughs> we don't care if it's one bird, half of an elephant, whatever we have, the show will go on. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you have this idea of, well, if I can't make it, well then click. No, the show, the, 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 the whole saying, the show will go on, must go on, is, is just a real thing. And you know what? I was so I was so salty when I saw the hashtag the show must be paused <laughs> during all of this. I was so salty. I was like, the show couldn't pause when there was a, a MTA strike and I had to figure out how to get my butt to work. The show wasn't paused when I had to I was so I was like, let me let me like no. all right. I say that to say you have to take care of yourself, whatever that means. Self-care is imperative. Yeah. And I've been touting this for the past several months with everything going on between the pandemic and riots and racism. Take care of your mental health. Take care of you. My therapist reminds me every Monday, self-care. I don't care if it's lighting a candle. I don't care if it's not picking up the phone for that person who's calling you who you are not in the mood to talk to. Ooh, just went through that. that. <laughs> so, I, you, you got perched and the eyes got big. Like, mm-hmm. It was literally like a, I had to establish a no contact policy with someone who I've known for years. And it was like, this isn't working. So we had to. And listen, just because the phone rings does not mean you have to answer it. That's a wonderful exercise. No is a complete uh, sentence. Right. No is a complete sentence. I, I called you, girl. Uh, I saw. <laughs> Confirmed. Message you see. Affirmative. <laughs> so you had a red receipt on it, but yeah, when I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're my friend, you, you will get it. Me. You Absolutely. Know? All right, guys. I hope you were. <laughs> Somebody said milk bath ladies. Yes. Okay, guys. So I, this is the time. I know there's plenty of things here. If if you posted a question like 30 minutes ago, repost it. I'm coming to them right now. I'm here with Susan Hayward. If you missed any part of this, it will replay. We have more to talk about, but if you have a current question, I'm going to go to the thread, so bear with me. And go ahead and DM me at Susan Hayward about that milk bath recipe. Yeah, that was Jericho. Jericho Horn, my last name, sister. Um, Talk to me. Yeah, reach out to Susan on Insta. Um, Let's see. Steven says, I'm glad you were bringing this up because my mind is going negative and saying stop the acting for a while. I'm going back up to early. This might have been something we talked about a little bit ago. So anything you want to talk about, you can always jump in. A lot of people said, glad you're bringing it up. It's power in the struggle. Don't stop. Don't let your dreams die. Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. scrolling, you guys. I'm scrolling. There. there Go ahead. Talk. I do want to say about that. Okay, so How do I say this concisely? Say it, just say how, say it just plain. Stopping doesn't mean stopping forever, right? Like right. if you have right. to take a break or a pause, there is nothing wrong or forever about taking a step back and, and re-strategizing. There is nothing quitting or cynical about recognizing that what you're doing might not be getting you closer to your goal and taking a step back and, and rethinking things. Like that's what, that's wisdom. That's what wise people do. That's so. listening to that voice. We talked last week, no, two weeks ago, I, I interviewed Kaywin Kendrick, one of my good friends who's in Just Mercy, The yeah. Hate You Give. And we talked about taking a break if needed, if it's not feeling good to your spirit. And I was, I'd want to remind you all, there's peace in a pause. We see Cicely Tyson, honey, she ain't going nowhere, okay? She took a break. We didn't see her for a while. And then we saw her everywhere. And I think of Lynn Nottage, you know, before she wrote, I think it was before she wrote Ruined, she took a multi-year break from writing. She was doing humanitarian efforts and traveling and living and being in the world. And sometimes in order to be the artist you want to be, you need to go live 
live a life and go through some things and then have something to bring back to the art. Come on, somebody put hashtag Sade break in these comments because Sade will take a break on you and you will be so happy to see her when she gets back. Damn! <laughs> hashtag Sade break in these comments. Um, Shantae, what's up, Shantae? Always um, a great supporter here. This is a question for you um, or us. I have struggled with my weight being a Black actress with a booty in Hollywood. Come on, booty. What do you do to maintain your TV body frame? I do thank my parents because <laughs> genetic coding is a real thing. Um, earlier when I was talking about reaching out to people for help, I finally found a nutrition coach and workout trainer whose uh, fitness workout works best for me. Uh, they're called Core Rhythm Fitness. They're here in New York. I've been doing their um, their workouts online since the quarantine. And it was the best mix because they acknowledge that the body is, it's a mind, body, and a spirit connection. Mm -hmm. All of them are connected and they address all three parts of the person. So I had a nutritionist to help me figure out what to eat because your body is 80% what you eat, only 20% that working out. And then they fed my spirit and then they worked me out and got me a good sweat. So yeah. I'm finding the people who know more than I did was really, really important. That's been key to me. I've been blessed to, nothing's by accident. So mm -hmm. it was divine time that my trainer was literally delivered to me through my inbox. Shout out to Zimzon official. And I've been working out four days a week with a gladiator. Ooh. And yes, yeah, Zimzon official, get into it. Yeah. Um, and the mind control. It's a mind game. Y'all can't see it over here. I got printouts of beautiful toned women and I have all these mantras on the wall and I look at them while I work out so I don't forget them. But, you know, I talk, I have to walk my walk. As an acting, as a career coach and as an actor, I'm like, yeah, don't let that inner critic get you. Don't let her get you. But it's different than acting. For acting, it may show up right before you go in the room or mm. you say, you have the choice. Working out, my trainer's like, no, right? That last rep you don't think you can do. Yeah. That's when she's showing up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn it. Oh, that's Veronica. I named my inner voice Veronica. That's what I talk about. Those of you who don't have my book, if you don't have my book, get into it. It's not over here. I don't know where it is. But I named her because I needed to know that my inner critic was not me. So I Veronica should. needs to have several seats. I don't need your input right now, girl. Okay. I'm now, delicious, right? So I love that. Um, oh, Kenya, one more thing. I also oh, want yeah. to say that like, your best body is a healthy body. So it's not about measurements. Yes. Like the you best can. body is the body you feel good in, the body you take care of, the body that you protect and you surround with people who can protect you too. And if Hollywood doesn't know what to do with your beautiful, luscious booty, then that's an opportunity you, for you to show Hollywood what to do with your beautiful, luscious beauty. You find people to collaborate with, you write, you produce, or you don't do those things and you find people who, who make the work you want to be in and you take your luscious booty where it's going to be loved. I love it. Come on, hashtag Luscious Booty, Shantae, in these comments. Yeah, I wish. I wish. I'm not. <laughs> That's not all my ministry. Of, listen, all of our booties are luscious. I don't care if it's little or big, honey. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> okay? Because that's what's happening over here. <laughs> hearts and hearts. And hearts. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kenya Brown says, and you don't have to get so specific, but you can, you can generalize this answer if you need to. Okay. And I can... I can Chipping on this one too. Okay. How do you sustain a relationship while working as an actor? Oh, I haven't. <laughs> I F for failed. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Um, my last relationship was a few years ago. He was also an actor, and we well, learned a lot with each other. We learned a lot. Ooh, more power to the two actors. It's hard. It's hard with the because we talked about the roller coaster, right? But now it's two roller coasters, and you're trying to be on the same ride. It's very difficult. Girl. Um, but I'm I'm very bad at dating. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at uh, creating time to do it. Um, I I'm, am private. I don't like to talk about it. But sustaining it, I wish I had more help for you because I don't have very much. <laughs> I'll speak from my experience. You know, it, it is, 
I, I, I give so much props. My husband should be in here to answer this question. God bless anyone who, who dates an artist, who dates an actor, especially. Yeah. Okay, like I'm preparing for this role right now. I cannot. Like I'm literally not available to you. Who I yeah. am is not available to you. Sorry. And so I will say communication is key mm. um, because, and I'll speak very transparently, oftentimes for most of my life, I have chosen my career first. And it's so not fair to the people who have been in my life. Yeah. Um, and so I, the best I can say is you got to choose you first and, and know what you're willing to sacrifice because also it does not serve you to be like, oh, he don't want me to really act or she don't want me to really act or, uh, and then you are, then there's resentment in, an, in some other way because you didn't, you didn't get to fully live your dream. And so I think a person who really is there for you and, and, and loves you and is there to support you will, will take that L of being like, shit, it ain't always great. I mean, she'd be in her moods when I come home or she, I don't know what character to expect, but you know, like, I think we're special people and there are special people put on this earth to, do, to, to, uh, to deal with us. There are lids for every pot. Absolutely. Let me see. It was so much good stuff. I see y'all. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Communication. Um, Sandra Nelson. What's up, Sandra? Do you feel that you are constantly changing your hair to match your headshot for an audition and then have to change it back for another role booked another day? Oh, girl, the hair saga. No, girl, get some wigs. Just wigs all day, Sandra. I, I mean, I feel like anytime I have a, a Black actress on here, we have this conversation. Well, yeah, and, I have, and I have several YouTube videos about this, too. Wigs are your friends. I don't believe in being uh, stuck in any one hairstyle. What I want to do for my personal day-to-day -day life is my business. If I happen to work in that, fine. But if I want to dye my hair purple tomorrow, that should be my prerogative. But I, where I think some um, Black women, this is where some of y'all mess up. Mm. Your regular everyday hairstyle, your regular everyday nails mm. ain't going to get you the bookings that you want. Do that on your playtime. If this is your business, have your business outfit, have your uniform. That's how I look at it. My hair literally becomes a uniform. <laughs> You're preaching. You're preaching to the people. I mean, because people are, I'm not booking. Well, take them coffin nails off. And take that that try that two tone weave out. This is, my, <laughs> this is my fun hair. When I do my lives, I do whatever the what whatever I feel like doing. But when I get that breakdown, and it's saying mother forties, you know, sympathetic warmth. I can't, I'm not no. And what I is your uniform? So please chime in. What's your what's your take on this, Susan? I just I'm I'm just at the beginning of learning this lesson and putting it into practice because for a long time, I booked work I think based on this and this right like the tiki the open thing and they were like oh you're a pro you had the TWA just like a kind of white person who loves that right right <laughs> and so I'm kind of graduating into my signature look I don't know what it is yet um so I'm trying out things I just had a photo shoot at the top of the year where I made a point of bringing a bunch of different wigs that I hadn't really gotten photos in so that I could start sending things out and see yeah. what what hit. So I'm 100% in the middle of that process of figuring out what my uniform is yeah. going to be. I got a lot of response with the, the really big, beautiful, curly, like natural. That's also a New York vibe. That's curly. also a New York vibe, though. What you guys have to understand, and I talk about this in my in my course, Book More TV. Doors open July 6th, by the way. I have a whole module about hair. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not just for my sisters, but my white girls too. We talk about clippings, tapings, all of it. Because everything means something different in this industry. So I like to teach. To me, this is all a game. It's all a game. If you Follow Jim Carrey's page if you just need to understand that a bit more. Like Once you come outside of this and stop taking this so seriously and be like, it's a game. What's these chess pieces doing? Oh, if I do this, this happens? That's what this is. And that's why I get so much joy from it. It's not that art is serious to me. Like art is fun. You can't take that. I don't care if I don't book another job again. 
I'm not going to stop acting. I was acting before bookings came when I was in the Bronx, you know, in our apartment on 233rd and White Plains Road. So once you understand that, then you understand, okay, long hair means this. And in New York, I just find specifically the big curly kind of natural long. That is a very um, common look for the people, the um, women who get cast in New York shows. Yes. Versus maybe some of the LA shows are a little bit glossier, more long, luxurious. You just got to know what markets you're in and study the market and study the shows that are booked in your market. That's a little sidebar for you. But again, we talk more about this in Book More TV. Get into it. Um, uh, let me come to these comments. Wow, let's more see. Light. You keep turning on more and more light. <laughs> I know, because I was like, oh man, it's like eight o'clock here. So the sun. All oh, right, when we started the video, it was still, it was still light up. You're seeing my laundry behind me. You're seeing the window that I was getting light up earlier. <laughs> there we go. Okay. You were getting a tour of Susan Haywood's house. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> Here and how they're about actors. The apartment, darling. Yes. Okay, Dorian, keep asking your questions, guys. We're we're here. Dorian Davis says, You are both an inspiration as theater and on screen actors. Thank you. Do you have any advice of uh for how to take control of your two passions as an art young artist? I currently I'm currently with the theatrical commercial agency in LA, but I hope to do Broadway and national tours in the future. So it sounds like you're in LA, but you want to do Broadway tours. Do you have an uh, the um, an agent, Dorian, that gets you seen? I mean, right now everything's yeah, shut everything down. down. Um, so let me just answer this quickly. Go the for advice it. is approach all of them. You know, always work on your music. If you if you're doing, uh, I don't know if you sing or not. If you want to do music, if you want to do musical theater. Don't wait until the audition comes to start getting your sheet music and practicing songs and getting a strong 16 bars, 32 bars. If you're not a singer, don't wait to the last minute to get your monologues. We always need a comedic, comedic and a dramatic monologue for theater. Like, and if you have an agent here in town, does your agency have a department for theater? In New York, we call it legit. You know, it's confusing because we call it theatrical for TV film, but see, start there. Um, I mean, it's all possible. There's when these Broadway shows open back up, mm-hmm. who knows what will happen, but there's always bro- uh, open calls. Even if you don't have rep, for those of you who are not repped, you're so cute. Get a I'm reset. Still, like lighting. <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. We got the curtains and everything. So there's always open calls. I mean, they have to, by like through equity rules, always have to have a six month like uh, equity open call for any mm-hmm. Broadway show. So that's, that's very possible. Um, but just know, Keep in mind the market you're in. If you're in LA, you know, some, they have open calls here, but there's going to be local theater here. There's not a lot of union theater houses. If you're not union here in LA, we have a lot of 99 seat theater houses. So just keep doing it. Just keep doing the theater. The beautiful thing about doing theater in LA is you could do a theater, a show with 50 seats, and the LA Times might cover it. Hollywood Reporter might cover it. I've been in that too. So you, now you're able to leverage that to the next gig. I hope that helps. And I also feel like tech, use technology. If it's what you do, you can film yourself and have your own YouTube channel, have your, you know, yes. put your out there so that if you're based in LA, the folks in New York can still see you and see you work consistently. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Loving all of this. Um, my mom said, so true, Christine Horn. I don't know what my mom's agreeing with me on, but I'm sure it's <laughs> amazing. I'm so glad she's here. Danique, shout out to Danique Jones. She's in my inner circle. That's my VIP private coaching program. I tell her to study you because she has these big, beautiful, expressive eyes just like you. I feel like y'all could be sisters from another mister. And she asks, do you struggle with procrastination? And if so, how do you deal with it? Yes, very much so. Um, She's like, yes, let me think about how I might be able to tell you about that soon. uh, I I just... (laughs) came off a really rough battle with procrastination. Like without structure in my day during, during quarantine, I've got 50, 11 million things I want to do and then don't do any of them. So the first thing is narrowing down and prioritizing, right? Instead of putting everything on the same level of importance, it's like, that's not urgent. That's not urgent. That's not urgent. And then getting things down to a manageable load. Mm-hmm. And then I just had my, therapist gave me an anti-procrastination worksheet mm. where it was amazing what he 
did what it does is it kind of helps you break things down into smaller steps and then it slows down the process so that you check in with what is the perceived difficulty of doing the step, how difficult it actually was, and then how much satisfaction you thought you'd get out of the step and then how much satisfaction you actually got out of the step. So once I'm able to slow all of the little steps down and take it one thing at a time, my brain doesn't leave me. I think I'm mostly procrastinating when I'm caught up in my brain and I'm thinking and thinking and thinking and not doing. So just starting with one concrete thing baby step. to help break that. A baby step and the beauty of a baby step, and I'm always preaching this, it's a win. So same thing goes like, I, I gotta go to the gym, I want a six pack, just stop with that. I need you to do one sit up today. And that's what's enough. One, right. What's one going to do? Don't worry about what's one going to do. Have you done one in the past eight months? No. We'll do one today. And then leave it alone. Yes. And, and then you're going to be like, yesterday I did one sit up. A hey, two sit ups today. Like. <laughs> Don't get me on a beat. Don't do it. <laughs> Susan, I cannot wait to see you in person. It's going to be my, my best in the most beautiful way. But that's the thing. I'm always talking, we don't, we don't trust ourselves enough. So you got to prove to yourself that you can do the thing that you say you were going to do. So don't be like, tomorrow I'm doing 80 push-ups. Yes, don't just, just start with one. Because what if your body physically can't handle 80? Then you're going to think you're a failure for not doing 80. And what's wrong with me? She can do 80. He can do it. And then you all, and then we're doing the thing now. Now we're walking this way. We're looking this way. Yes. We're about to wrap. Gosh, the time goes so fast. You know, I wanted to, we've been talking about so many things. As you guys can see, we could go on and on. But I want to get to the core of what our message was today. Yeah. Because I reached out to you on, on Instagram. I was like, okay, what should we call this? And I was just on a live the other day talking about, y'all know I'm a, uh, I'm a Lori, uh, Laura called me inspo junkie, inspiration junkie. I love personal development. And I was sharing this book, The Power of Imagination by Neville. And I was sharing how as actors, you brought it up for a different reason, but I'm just sharing. I was just talking about how as actors, our job is to, to use our imagination. But somehow we end up using it for the worst case scenario. We will see the worst case scenario play out. And, you know, it's this thing of if you, if you wish for success, but plan for failure, you will get what you plan for. Girl. You get what you expect. Okay. And so that's just where I was. But I want to talk about where you were because you gave me a few things when I reached out. You said, maybe breath. No, maybe context. You're like, no, imagination. So why did you, why was imagination so much in the forefront of your mind yesterday when I reached out to you? Well, particularly when the quarantine started and COVID started, there was that word unprecedented that was everywhere. Do you remember that? Yes. And I was reading up on Spanish flu and other plagues and I was like, it's not really unprecedented. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a new virus, Like it's a new, um, it's a new entity, right? Organism, but a plague is not unprecedented. Right. Even a global plague is not unprecedented. The Spanish flu went around the globe a couple of times. So it made me, it made me go, okay, well, why don't, why, why is this word being used a lot? And why don't we know that it's untrue? Mm. And I feel like for me, my imagination is fed by what I learn, by what I already know. And that's a jumping off point. But if we don't know enough, how can we imagine the next thing? And I think it's our job as artists, particularly as actors, to show people how, how we can be. So we have the power to show people how they can be in quarantine. We have the power to show people how they can survive quarantine. We have the power to show people how they can be after quarantine and imagine for them. But we can't do it if we don't know what we're talking about. And we can't teach ourselves. So I felt like imagination was on my mind because I was figuring out what does it take to grow your imagination? What does it take to direct it? What does it take to feed it? Um, because if, if that's our job, right? If we're supposed to be the ones at the front, imagination is supposed to be our specialty. So that's-, so, that's how do you, so how do you, before we wrap, give how do you feed yours? 
Right. I'm a big reader. I'm a big nerd. Um, and also for me, it's, it's that ego battle. Um, because I also battle feeling like I know everything and I don't. So it's trying new things. It's being a student failing. Um, I'm uh, not good at failing, but when I do, that's when magic happens. Um, I, I, I keep a journal sometimes when I'm being good and consistent, I keep a journal of my audition um, experiences. And it's always when I leave the audition experience and go, I didn't know that about that character. I learned this about the character during the audition. That's when I get a call back. That's when I book. Right. It's when I've got everything I know and in the moment had an active imagination to go, oh, what happens here? Right that connects. Right, not that I rehearsed it this way. And I held on to that for a long time because I thought it was responsible to do my work and know and then present my work, but it's really boring. <laughs> and so I, I did a, a lot of work with a teacher called Josh Pice. He's a fabulous actor, acts all the time. Uh, he was in, um, oh, what's the, um, the one that Liev Schreiber was in? Um, well, Ray Donovan? Ray Donovan, yes. He played uh, the rich, kind of creepy guy with the young girlfriend and Ray Donovan. He's also an acting teacher. And another place where for me, my imagination lies is in my body sensations. Mm -hmm. And what Josh teaches is all those nerves that we try to control and try to press down are actually where we get our fuel from. So if we can really get in touch with our bodies, get in touch with all the sensations and create from there, even if it doesn't like make logical sense, if we can pair the truth of our experience and our bodily sensations with the text, our imaginations will fill in what's, what's mysterious about it. Yeah. Um, so learning, reading, trying to think failure and body work, those are the things that I really hold on to, to feed my imagination. I love that. And, you know, I'll share something that I like to use I love all of that. I'm really big in the body. I, I did a YouTube video recently about how I connect to animals who are old. Yes, the animal video. That's my jam. I love animal work. I do. And it, it, I've done it in some live workshops and some of my students are like, I don't connect to this. I'm like, all of these things are tools in your toolbox. Everybody doesn't need every tool. But for me, I just... It goes back to that like core, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of my community, some of you started in school, some of you are starting at 40, 50 years old, some of you are starting late, so you didn't, you may not have had all these moments of exercise and discovery, but there are so many types of exercises, and you can Google some of these if you don't, you know, if you're not in the class with me, but finding that connection is just, it guides you in such a way. You know, and sometimes my students don't sh realize it. And then I'll be like, well, when I played Harriet Tubman, I was tapped into a gorilla. And then I will do the, and I'll, and they'll be like, oh, I see it. Yes, I see it. I see it. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know? So that's just something that works for me. And I love also asking, just asking questions. You know, a lot of us, we get, we get caught up in, um, they only sent me two pages or they only sent me, the 10 pages, I don't know any, well, ask more questions. And that's your job, your, cause they, they come to you. Cause they're like, we don't know how to make this live. We only got two pages. Right. <laughs> we'll pay you a bunch of money to like, Ugh. <laughs> 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 right? That's, like, that's, that's they, so true. If they that's, move, you're one person to go. Hold on, that is an aha, guys. I need you to pause and hear that. Because think about it, Susan, how many of us, and we've all been there, be like, I don't know what they want. They don't know. <laughs> it's a dream. Like, they had a fever dream while they were writing this, and then they had the producers and the network say, no, we can't do that. The FCC won't let us do that, blah, blah, blah. They don't know. You are like a you're like in the Da Vinci Code, but they got a whole bunch of clues, and they need you to solve their problem. And they're they, they're like, please solve my problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm like, it is your it is your job as the actor. So ask more questions. And I'm like, release the right, the release the uh, attachment to be right. I always say, in, in Matt, you're probably wrong. Now have fun. You have two pages. I'm sure you're wrong. Make a choice though. Ask a question. Answer it yourself. 
probably wrong. Guess what? But casting would be like, oh, wow, interesting. There it is. And it will just be committed, not this in between seeking validation. I hope they like me vibe. Well, I went through a whole, at least a year of that, where I'd leave the audition and I'd be like, I didn't make a choice. <laughs> look at that, look at the eye gaze. What is that? What is I that? didn't make not nary one choice. <laughs> And they'd be like, thanks for coming. I, the worst thing I heard one time somebody was like, thanks for coming and memorized. Ooh. That's all she could say. That's I was like, okay. You Ooh, right. that's, a, that's a word for some of y'all who just trying to get off book only. Oh, that's all she could do because I didn't make a choice. And that's my job. <laughs> that was on me. Oh, I'm going to use that. And, uh, thanks for coming and memorized. Thank you. Honey, that's you. all you gave me. All you gave me was what, and that's the thing. All you gave me was what we gave you. Ooh, come on now. And and imagination is the space between what they give you on the page and then what you do in between the box or on stage. The imagination is the bridge that's going to get you to somewhere else. I'm not talking because that's going to be the teaser for this episode. Just for those of y'all who see it later, that was gold, gold. <laughs> I'm asking you one last question, two, and then we're gonna wrap. And thank you for your, 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 your generosity and your time and feeding this audience, um, and me. <laughs> I'm fed. I'm so full. Cool. <laughs> beautiful. Um, two questions. One, I like to talk. You know, it's one thing to to start on the show as a as a to start to create to st- be the start of a new sh- series. Uh, as a recurring guest star series regular, you get to create your character from the top. You get to help create the tone of the show with everybody else. And then you have days where you come in as a day player. How is it? Can you, for people who have not experienced this yet, how would you describe, I'm going to use Orange is the New Black, uh, just because that's uh, very prevalent for a lot of people. How do you find your way joining a tight knit cast show uh, in the last final seasons yet still making your own mark there's been other security guards on the show before you know this like so how did you you booked it okay great but once you're like okay i'm here what how do you tap into something that will be different but also to to mesh with the the vibe that's already been created Mm, mm. i i think i did the opposite maybe um i did a lot of mental work of letting go of any expectations. Mm. I was like, great, if if I'm a if I have a three episode arc and I'm a face you see for a little bit in this world, I'm happy with that. So I didn't I did my best not to put anything on it. Yeah. And then I didn't think about meshing actually. I thought about if they're introducing a new character is because they want something different. They yeah. want something to stand out. They don't want what they've had before. So my, my focus was to kind of keep my blinders on and do the work, get in the script, find the moments. I was reading, oh, I was reading Truth by Susan Batson. Yes. Do it if you don't have it. <laughs> you better just. Girl, stay in the work. Stay in the hey, work. Work, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't know how long this is going to be. I don't know how long this is going to pay my bills. What I have, what I can hold on to, is the work and my imagination. And uh, I was reading the part where oh, Susan was talking about the persona, mm-hmm. and then the 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 pearl behind the persona. Like who who's the person inside, and then what persona do they put on to protect their vulnerable right. insides? So I was like, it doesn't have to be a lot of pages to have a full person Mm -hmm. and that's what i focused on i was like okay writers if you see a full person and that inspires their imagination and they write more that's because i've done my job to bring in a a full person right i i don't know how much they had already mapped out for tamika like i don't know if in their writer's practice they were like this is gonna be her journey and i just listen yeah but then look you could show up and be a hot mess and they'd be like she gets shot next (laughs) Honey, you be killed in an instant. So you know, it's TV. Like, for, real, a for real serenity prayer. Like, Lord, give me the courage to change the things I can, which is my work, 
right the the what is it the the to serenity grant. to accept the things I cannot change and the right. wisdom to know the difference. Yes. And so I really do hold on, on to that with my work. And then if y'all want more of this different. <laughs> right. And you booked that. and you booked it. So there was something there that they already saw and loved. Um, also, I, I want you guys to take that note because as actors, you can be stuck in your head. I love that you came in knowing that, A, basically you were enough. And what you showed up to your audition with was clearly enough because you booked it. So you have something that is just already enough. So trying to fit in into this world is not necessary. How you showed up is enough and, and, and lean into that. I love that. Final thing before we wrap, and I like to ask everybody this. Oh, this, this was such a juicy. Juicy. Okay. <laughs> Get out of my head. I just said juicy in my head. Did you? <laughs> Um, and again, if you miss any part of this, you can catch the replay once this bounces down. You can follow Susan Hayward on Instagram at Susan Hayward. Um, and um, for those of you who are uh, uh, wanting to book more TV, my signature course opens on July 6th. That's when the doors open. You can get all the information. It's a game changer. You're welcome in advance. Um, <laughs> I stand behind her. <laughs> toy, toy, toy. Listen, I, I literally try to be the coach that I didn't have back when I was in LA the first time in 2011, mm -hmm. struggling on the struggle bus, clueless, not knowing what I was doing wrong mm -hmm. and having friends who were working too afraid to ask. And no one certainly was help. Like just saying, Hey, let me come help you. Mm -hmm. But you know, before we wrap for the actor at home, we, we kind of touched on this in so many pieces tonight, but just as this good sum up. And I, cause I get emails, people reach out to me all the time, Susan, DM, Instagram, my email. They're ready to throw in the towel. Some of you are in this thread right now. I'm not going to call you out. Literally like not seeing the result they want quick enough. I put in this thing many years. I don't, it has, it hasn't happened. I like to often just remind us that the it, keeps changing, the, the bar for it keeps changing. And so if we only rely on the it to give us the fuel to keep going, I feel like we're always setting ourselves up for disappointment in some way. In so what would you say to the actor at home? They might be brand new or they might be in this game 15 years. Mm -hmm. Just what piece of encouragement would you give that person at home who's watching you right now? I think that it's important to allow your definition of success to shift mm -hmm. um, and to check in and make sure your definition of success is your definition of success. I think a lot of the times it's given to us and without realizing it, we're chasing this like picture that somebody else put in our heads and whether they realize it or not, they put it in our heads for them. Mm -hmm. It can be a family member who's putting their dreams on you. It can be someone else in the industry who's like, if I had what you had, this is the life I would build. And then we take that on without realizing it. Yeah. You know, to me, success is genuine connection. Mm -hmm success is discovering something about a character. Success is pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. Success is not being dependent on someone else financially. You know, mm -hmm. success is patience, planning. Success is character building. Success doesn't necessarily look like a series regular on this show with this amount of money. Uh, I, I, I don't think that even when people who often think that success and they arrive there, it's often so empty. I, I've, I've been in this business long enough to have been close enough to see that chasm inside Yeah. when somebody gets there and they haven't really defined success in themselves and it's not enough. And it's a very, very sad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say for anyone who's feeling down, it might be a time to step back and use your imagination to re retool what, what success is for you. Because like, it's now, like, this is your life now. 
Yeah. Your life isn't two weeks from now or at the next gig or 10 years from now or when you're on that stage picking up that golden statue. Your life is now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And how you show up for yourself now. You know, we talked about, oh, I don't know why this is, something's coming up. I don't know why, but we're going to lean in. Let's go in there. We talked earlier about self-care in, in, the, in the realm of dealing in this world, the state of the world right now. And self-care might be many things, lighting a candle, not taking that phone call, doing different things. But I think self-care also is just you showing up for yourself. How do you show up for yourself? Who are you when no one is watching? What do you stand for? Be excellent in all that you do. So if you're working a nine to five or five to 10, be excellent in that. Be grateful for that. That thing is, is fueling your gift. It funds your gift. It gets those new headshots, gets you in that class. Because the energy, how you do one thing is how you do all things. Right? I'm so hype right now. Like, that's like, it's so important how you, like, instead of saying that day job or that moneymaker as a chore or the thing that's taking you away from your dream, it's the thing that's fueling your dream. It's the thing that's getting you there. So the way you show up for work, the way you show up for that, your boss might have a cousin who works in the industry that all of a sudden needs somebody for the independent film they're doing. And because you show up on time and you show up with a good attitude and consistently they go, you're an actor, right? Aren't you doing right. that same thing? Been yeah. there. I, book, I can't tell you how many voiceovers, print jobs and things I booked at my old nine to five that I talk about in my book. That nonprofit I worked at, if you read my book, you know what I'm talking about. And that's the truth. That is the truth. <laughs> and, and, let's not, and let's be clear. Let's be clear too, Susan. Let's talk about it. When you're on a show or on a series, though it's your dream and you love it, guess what? When you're tired and it's that 12th hour and you just ready to go home, but they're like, uh, we're going to do, we got four more shots, four more setups. And you're like, how are you showing up in that moment? It's not all just rainbows, right? Like how that is work. It ain't three takes. No. Depending and you're on not gonna- you're not going to become that person when you get there. Yes. You get to be number one and then be nice. And then, have, and then have stamina. And then be generous. That's... You're not going to be generous after you get the big trailer. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You're going to be generous when, when you're in holding because your background. Because yeah. I was there too, honey. And you got to be prepared. You got to listen out a little extra because they don't tell background folks nothing. You got to bring something to read. Bring it. How are you showing up for you? Because the way you show up for you there is the way you're going to show up for yourself there. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't be the last one to get to the set now. We ain't gonna, so that's a whole separate conversation. And, ooh, ooh, I don't care what number you are on the call sheet. I don't care. I don't want to be the one y'all are waiting on unless it's for a good reason. If it's for a good reason. Right. Right. Just for work. Right. We gonna we y'all gonna wait. But and I'm, and I'm gonna make sure everybody know too. We're gonna be playing the Moki Do games that we know happen. <laughs> well, we're waiting on her. No, no, no. You bring my socks, Janet. <laughs> Remember, I told you I needed those socks and the fitting. Because it's 12 degrees outside. <laughs> you weren't just waiting for me to floss and like do my hair. That's not what that's not what was happening. That's called advocating for myself. Separate conversation, guys. We will have to come back another day. Susan B. Hayward. <laughs> I like my new middle name. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take a breath. In honor of Marilee, one of my amazing clients, Marilee Kateri, a couple of, couple of holidays ago, she got me this lovely chakra ball. And I keep it right here in between clients. It was like the best gift. And I hit it between clients. I just want to reset. Mm. Let me do it one more time. I'm grateful for you. 
I thank you for being here. I thank you for sharing your heart. I thank you for sharing your journey. I wish so much love and success to you that's already here, already happening. Ooh. I pray that you continue to receive everything that is in your heart, continue to manifest, continue to just remember your worth, your beauty, and all that you have to offer this community, all that you have to offer us, your art matters. You are just so, I just feel, feel you. I just feel your energy. I feel your love. And so many amazing things are just already here, already happening. And the same thing for each and every one of you at home. It is already here. Just because you can't see it, don't be fooled by your right now. Mm. Hold steadfast to your dreams. You are magical. We are magnets. That's why we call ourselves booking magnets. You are drawing things to you. Remember, <laughs> You pray for success, but you plan for failure. You're going to get what you plan for. So why not use that energy to plan for the best case scenario, the best possible right now, as Susan was saying. This replay will be here. This is Hollywood Bound Actors. This is how we get down in Hollywood Bound Actors. Okay? The replay will be here. Follow Susan Hayward at SusanHayward.com. To all of you, have a good night. Leave comments. Um, and if Susan has time, maybe she'll come back through here when the replay's up and, and reach out to you guys. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Be well. Hey, you. Are you an actor? Not booking. Well, guess what? The problem isn't you. It's not that you're not talented, hardworking, or deserving. It's that you haven't found the missing link that can change your career forever. Playing small. The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet. It's my new book. You can order it now at whyplaysmall.com.